Krishna. What is the Vedic perspective on the Trinity? Answer, the Trinity as is understood in some denominations in Christianity is the the two the two branches of Christianity Trinitarian and Unitarian and the Trinitarian is what is most far more widespread nowadays so there are either God the Son the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit they are in one sense one and in another sense they are different and there's one truth which is manifested in three that is the idea of the Trinity now if we look at what the Trinity is not sometimes Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh are called as the trinity of gods within the Vedic pantheon. But Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, first of all, they are not at all the trinity in the sense in which the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, that term is used in the Catholic theology, in the Christian theology. The point is that Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh are in charge of three activities within this material creation, creation, maintenance and destruction. And... Um, that is related with the three modes of material nature. So, uh, there is Rajoguna, which is Brahmaji's activity of creation, Satvaguna, which is Vishnu's activity of maintenance, and Tamaguna, which is Shiva's activity of destruction. So, now there is no such uh, metaphysical framework for uh, which is there for the Trinity, is for the functioning of the Trinity or for the interaction of the Trinity in Catholicism, in Christianity, is quite different from what it is in for the three gods Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Now if we look at the way the Trinity functions, the idea is that there is the, so God is eternally transcendent and he is beyond, he is beyond all human conception. So he becomes accessible to us in the humanity of Jesus wherein both uh, in Jesus, where he is, who is both human and divine simultaneously. And after Jesus comes and goes, uh, that uh, by Jesus' grace, the Holy Spirit is manifest in those who take shelter of him. So at the time of the Pentecost and other times, the Holy Spirit manifested and uh, the followers of Jesus were inspired by the Holy Spirit to go to distant lands and uh, share the gospel of Jesus. So this is the broad understanding. Now there are many metaphysical subtleties over here which we cannot go into. But broadly speaking, this is the understanding of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit within the Christian theology. Now what could be roughly equivalent is that when Srila Prabhupada was asked, he gave different answers when he was you instead of this word spirit, the word ghost was used. What does the Holy Ghost mean? Prabhupada replied simply that there are no Holy Ghosts. All ghosts are unholy. So Prabhupada answered it in different, different, uh, in different ways based on the uh, way people were asking. So he, this was a question which was asked by a hippie who had very little theological understanding. And Prabhupada answered according to that level over there. So the word spirit is used not in the sense of uh, spirits or ghosts at all. It is used in the sense that there is some, some, some higher presence of power enters into people. That is the understanding in Christianity. So if we look at the broad uh, Bhakti theology, uh, there we will see that there is God who is eternal. There is a God, the Father, the Son and the Spirit. If we talk about it roughly analogous, <coughs> there, is God, there is God who is eternally transcendental, that is Bhagavan. Then there is the Jiva. And the Jiva has a relationship which is activated through Bhakti. So when Bhakti Devi becomes active in the heart of a soul, then that soul becomes animated with the energy to serve the Lord. So in that sense, we could say the Holy Spirit refers to Bhakti Devi. And Bhakti Devi is the Mediatrix. We have Mediator, which is masculine. Mediatrix is feminine. So the Holy Spirit can refer to Bhakti Devi which is of course Radharani or Lakshmi Devi or Sita, whichever depending on, <coughs> on the particular understanding within Vaishnavism. However, this, the Holy Spirit can also refer to the super soul. So the super soul is present within the heart, but we are not always aware of the presence of the super soul. But as we become purified, as we become devoted, then we become more and more attuned to the presence of the super soul. So now of course within the Christian tradition, uh, the sun is considered to be one special 
Uh, so that all the other living beings are different from Jesus because he had he was conceived by God through the immaculate conception at the same but within the vedic understanding yes there can be great saints who are extremely special but every soul is also intimately connected with god and in that sense every soul is a is a son of god aham bija pratah pita krishna says pita aham asya jagato mata dhata pitamaha so in 14.4 in 14.4 in uh, 9.17 18 krishna talks about how he is intimately related with all living beings in this world so the so that means krishna who is transcendental becomes accessible to the soul becomes connected with the soul through the medium bhakti devi or through his manifestation of the super, as the super soul and in that way they both act in uh, the soul acts in harmony with the super soul with krishna through the voice of the super soul or through the avesh of bhakti so especially when we talk in terms of bhakti as there are devotees who enter into great ecstatic trances when the force of bhakti overwhelms them and that is in some way similar to how the holy spirit animates people in christianity but at the same time there are no exact parallels because the two theologies the vaishnava theology and the catholic theology have emerged from very different uh, frames of thought and although they are talking about the same absolute truth the way they have analyzed the same absolute truth are from very different and perspectives and analytical frameworks and that's why a clear parallel between the two is uh, not <coughs> easy to discern thank you hare